this is the fifth uh, section of chapter nine the differentiation chapter and here we're going to be looking at the quotient rule so this is a rule that's going to allow us to differentiate quotients so what we're looking at is expressions of this form okay uh, if we're using function notation so we've got a function which is one function over another okay you can see that all at the side um, if i write dy dx using um, the dy dx notation then that's going to be now this is slightly different to the product rule it looks similar but there is a slight difference so we start with v then we need to differentiate the u part then we need to subtract u multiplied by the v part differentiated and all of that is divided by v squared okay if we're going to use the function notation f dash of x it's the same so we're starting at the bottom we're multiplying it by the top differentiated so that's going to be g dash of x subtract and so we now do the opposite we start with the top and multiply by the bottom differentiated and it's all divided by the bottom part squared now when i was um, taught this i was taught this way top over bottom and the way i remember it is that this is a rule that starts at the bottom and finishes at the bottom i was told it's like a pair of trousers it starts at the bottom and finishes at the bottom so if it starts at the bottom so you start at the bottom you times that by the top differentiated then you basically do the opposite to what you've just written down so that's going to be top times by bottom dash okay this is not proper mathematical notation but you know it's just a way of helping remember over the bottom squared so it's like a pair of trousers in that you start at the bottom and you finish at the bottom see if you can work that out so it's like a pair of trousers it starts at the bottom and finishes at the bottom it's just a nice way to try and remember the quotient rule without having to go back to the formula booklet right so on this one first of all we're going to identify what's u and what's v or what's the top and what's the bottom so i'm going to do it this way so top is x bottom 2x plus 5 top dash is 1 bottom dash is 2 so i know i've not used conventional notation but top dash is just um, uh, du dx and bottom dash is dv dx so and then we just plug those into the formula for the quotient rule so dy dx we start with the bottom which is 2x plus 5 um, that gets multiplied by top dash which is just one then minus so we always got a minus there uh, then we go to the top multiply by the bottom dash don't worry i'll tie this all up in a moment divided by the bottom squared so 2x plus 5 all squared so tidying that up we have 2x plus 5 uh, minus 2x all over 2x plus 5 all squared so that will just simplify to 5 over 2x plus 5 all squared okay it's often useful to try and factorize any answers in case you need to identify and find any turning points uh, things like that right we are going to use the correct notation now not rather than top and bottom so u equals sine x 
v equals e to the 2x um, du dx is going to be cos x and dv dx if we differentiate that is going to be 2 e to the 2x remember we get the number here at the front by differentiating the power yeah so that differentiate is 2 so you just put the 2 in the front plugging that into the quotient rule we're going to get dy dx equals so we start with the bottom which is um, e to the 2x multiply that by the top differentiated which is cos x then there's a minus very important don't forget the minus and then it's going to be the top multiplied by the bottom differentiated to e to the 2x all over the bottom squared so e to the 2x and that's squared so uh, let's do that over here where I've got a bit more space and simplify it so dy dx right now I can see that e to the 2x is a common factor and I want to factorize it because I'm looking for these places where dy dx equals 0 and it's going to be easy to find once I factorize it so I get cos x from that term and then minus 2 sine x from the second term all over e to the 4x because when you've got a power uh, to a power remember you multiply the powers that's e to the 4x now this can be cancelled down I have or I can take away 2x from both powers so this bit here that would become e to the 2x and then this bit just becomes 1 so I end up with cos x minus 2 sine x over e to the 2x now if I'm trying to find out where where this is 0 it's going to be easier if I bring that e to the 2x to the top so I've now got an expression where I've got something multiplied by something else yeah having that division is not really going to help me work out where it's equal to 0 well I suppose it could because the top will equal zero and it's possible actually that the bottom could equal zero as well so we'll write it like this so at dy dx equals zero we are going to have e to the minus 2x cos x minus 2 sine x equals zero which means either that this bit equals zero or this bit equals zero. Now, this first part, e to the mi minus 2x, can never be zero. And that's because the graph of e to the minus 2x is going to look something like this. Yeah, the e to the x graph it has this asymptote. So it never crosses the axis unless you add or subtract a number and move that graph up or down but as it stands e to the minus 2x can never be zero so there's no point pursuing that but over here um, this can equal zero so you've got cos x um, minus 2 sine x equals zero okay let's carry this on up here where i've got a bit more space that means that cos x equals 2 sine x um, which if we divide both sides by cos x we'll get um, 2 tan x equals 1 which then means that tan x equals a half we'll do the tan inverse of a half to get the principal solution now remember we are in radians have a look at the range here 
radians and in fact whenever we do any trigonometry um, when we're doing differentiation it's going to be in radians so tan inverse of a half in radians tan inverse a half in radians I get uh, 0.4636 six dot 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 it carries on like that now are there going to be any other solutions it just says stationary point i'm just going to check if i draw a cast diagram and i put on this angle here which i've got from my calculator so it basically is there the other place I'm going to get that angle is here. Now that's going to be too big because basically that's going to be pi plus 0.46, blah, blah, blah. So it's going to be too big. So the question's right. There is only one stationary point, but there may be questions where there may be more than one stationary point. Um, we may get those by um, actually using a cast diagram. So we've got our X coordinate which is 0 0.4636 now we need to work out our y coordinate and we do that by substituting our value of x that we've just got so the sine of 0 0.463 over um, e to the 2 times this 0 0.463 so for accuracy i'm going to be using the answer button because I've, I've got that on my calculator. So fraction button, sign answer, and at the bottom, uh, E, which is shift and natural log, two times answer, and I get an exact answer of 0 0.1769. Uh, we want our answers to three significant figures. So coordinate of p is x coordinate three significant figures 0 0.464 and the y coordinate 0 0.177 0 0.177 so I will just highlight that final answer there for that question. Right, you should now be able to do exercise 9e on pages 244 to 255.